Hey, it's Debbie Potts, and I am on a mission to help you understand how to personalize your fueling, training, and lifestyle program as an endurance athlete, as an aging athlete, and then more specifically, men versus women, a female athletes may need to make some adjustments compared to your fellow male training partner's schedule. So an article Pinoe has on the benefits of a well-rounded personalized program I want to touch on and then continue on Stacy Sims recommendations as compared to what we continue to hear from lead influencers as Peter Atia about improving our VO2 max by doing more zone two training and how we may need to not generalize everybody needs to do the same thing. It's not a one size fits all approach. As we've continued to discuss on this podcast is that training zones are important to personalize with a metabolic test to figure out your true VO2 max and what is your zone one recovery, zone two, your zone two that everyone talks about, the long, slow distance bet. Us that have been in the industry a long time and as endurance athletes forever, you may think of this more as math, max aerobic function, heart rate that Phil Maffetone taught us 30 years ago and how we've been doing metabolic testing to really discover what your individual zone two truly is based on your fitness level at this moment in time. And this will change based on how we create your training schedule so we can personalize your zones and how much time you should spend in each zone, as well as resistance training and HIT training, plyometric training, because it's going to be different for each of us. And again, dialing in more the female phases in life, pre-menopause, perimenopause, post-menopause. And again, every time I say that, I always laugh because menopause is some silly definition of one day in time that you've had no period for a year. So women were different than men and our VO2 max is different. Not everyone wants to do a VT, a VO2 max test, but we've got VT2, VT1 we learn about. So let's go over the zones that we identify with a metabolic test. So you can find someone near you that does Pinoe or in a exercise phys lab that may do a different equipment as core K-O-R-R, I think. So the training zones, recovery one is about 55 to 60. 5% of your heart rate max or 75 to 80% of your heart rate at VT2. That's ventilatory threshold two we'll go over. This zone is used to get your body moving with minimal exertion. It may be appropriate to use as an easy training day. And as Stacey Sims is talking about, you know, do this zone one, zone two day on your days that you want to recover, have fun, be with friends and go easy. So this is more active recovery day, but also intervals. You're coming up here, zone three, four, five, come back down to zone one, go back up. So that's what zone one is. Zone two, the aerobic base training. This is a long, slow distance we hear about, max aerobic function. When we do your metabolic tests, we are identifying what is your true zone two based on your metabolic test assessment. Where are you burning the most amount of fat? So I don't know if this article or is another one that shows a graph of your training fuels and you can see zone two, we can figure out what heart rate, what speed, what Watts, but it's not one specific number because remember a metabolic test is in a, it's like doing a, any scientific research study. They're not exactly the same as if you're running outside or biking outside in different weather conditions. And so we want to use this as a range, not one number specifically. So remember zone two is enhancing your fat burning efficiency, cellular health, and helps improve recovery capacity. So we're going into these zones back again to zone two is 81 to 89% heart rate of ET2. This is for your longer endurance training sports, improves your mitochondria function and fat burning efficiency. Now, what the discussion is, this is where you would think you should do all your training 
because of the need of an endurance athlete where we are doing, say, a half marathon, a marathon, a 50K trail run, long distance cycling event, trail running, that's 50K. Maybe you're doing a triathlon, half Ironman or Ironman distance that you need to have that aerobic engine super efficient and strong and be able to go long and burn fat and carbohydrates or your backup fuel tank, be metabolically flexible. So if you go above your fat burning zone, you can come back down into your fat burning zone. So you would think we all need to stay here all the time, but point is we're learning women, what Stacey Sims has in these recent blog posts on the female muscle makeup and zone two training, go read Stacy Sims, what women need to know about zone two training. It's very sciencey. And I just emailed Stacy Sims team to say, Hey, can you make this less sciencey? So I can explain this a little bit more for the people that don't want the, the science part of it, excess physiology. So what women need to do instead of zone two is her recent blog. She just put on there, but if you don't want to read about mono carbo xylate transporter, which is MCT1 and MCT4, we can just scroll to the bottom and you can see the summary. So this is blog is very sciencey. And if you're not exercise physiologist, you might not understand the heavy science part. So summary, she talks about Stacey Sims, Dr. Stacey Sims, from a health and longevity standpoint, the goal is not only to increase the MCT1 and increase mitochondria respiration, but glycolic capacity for the brain resiliency, enhancing brain glycolysis can increase neural neuronal metabolic strength to sustain better cognition and slow down, prevent progression of Alzheimer's disease. The research shows that a minimum of three days a week of HIIT training and SIT training dramatically increases this MCT1 expression, not MCT oil, it's something different, expression over six weeks and increases formation of improving the glycolytic capacity in the brain, brain to live drive lactate. So from a performance perspective, HIT and SIT training are critical, not only to improve your lactate production and clearance, and that would be those zone four, zone five workouts when you're using lactate as a fuel source. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing to produce lactate, but it's having a better ability to clear that metabolic uh, clearance of the metabolic byproducts. Now we also want to stimulate an increase in fast twitch muscle fibers, which are the type two muscle fibers, cross-sectional size and function of which females have significantly less fast twitch as compared to slow twitch muscle fibers. So this is what I've been diving into this just intuitively. I don't need to read an article that I am slower and I'm lacking power and speed the last five years or more. And I used to be a strong runner. I can still bike, but running, as I said, I have a structural limitation on my left side, not firing. It's more neuromuscular that doing strength training is not happening <laughs> or not helping after a year. I'm not able to generate any strength from this left side. So I think finding power and speed as you age is essential. And you have to always go back to watching, observing, learning, and reading what happens as we age. Why do we not do something about it? We get slower, you get fatter, you get more tired, you get less power production, you have less strength. You have all these changes. And instead, what you guys if you listen to me all the time, know what I'm going to say, instead of blaming the aging process, we need to actually take ownership and do freaking something about it and stop complaining because all of this is controllable. Even if you lose your estrogen and progesterone for the females, we need to change how we train and stop doing the same program over and over again as you age and also testing and not guessing. So you can know where do you need to focus on right now for the next three months. And then let's restructure that because you should be improving. If we have identified your areas of opportunity or your limiters, and then we structure a program for you as a unique individual, not what all your friends are doing, but what your body needs to improve fat loss, 
performance, speed, power, whatever you're looking for, then we can reach those goals and then test again correlate with some intake forms, your nutritional therapy assessment, ideally order some functional lab tests quarterly or twice a year, then you should be able to see you're making progress. If you you don't know what you don't know. So adding this power and speed intuitively, we should be thinking that instead of I'm getting slower. So I'm going to continue running slow, long distance run doesn't make any sense. So now we have the science that Stacey Sims is sharing here if you are lacking power and speed, we already have slow twitch muscle fibers, slow twitch type one. So what should we be doing as the aging athlete and specifically the female, if you are feeling this is really looking at changing that 80, 20 rule of 80% zone two, 20% hit training, flip flop that and I know Jason Karp, he is a run coach, exercise physiologist we interviewed, and he was just posting yesterday on his social media, the 80-20 rule is backwards. We should be doing, if you have foundation, I think he has different opinions, but that we should just start people out by doing sprint training and then add distance. So I think if you are middle age, you may actually benefit from doing 20, 30 seconds all out and then recover a minute. And I did that this morning, actually. We did speed workout at Solana Beach, Fletcher's Cove Beach, and then ran to Cardiff. And it is amazing in the morning, running along the 101 by the ocean, saw some dolphins, watched the surfers, sunrise. It's amazing. And then I did stair repeats after I warmed up. There's a big set of stairs uh, a little bit north of Fletcher's. And then I did five times on there, and that's 45 seconds plus or minus going up those stairs. And then I walked back down recovery one minute, did that five sets. And then I ran towards Cardiff. And then on the way back, I did 30 to 45 seconds fast. And then I walked 30 seconds or so until my heart rate came all the way down and went again, finished on Fletcher's Cove is a great steep hill. And I did 20 second sprints on the hill times five. And then I did some step-ups on the bench, the, uh, picnic tables out there and there's ledges. So I did some step ups sideways and forward and then some st stairs. I did uh, jumps up top. So you can add in this power and speed workout, getting a little plyometrics with some jumping up stairs safely, if you can do it right. With that in mind, then you are swapping that long, slow distance zone two workout that you do midweek. So say you're running um, typical workout for triathletes. We do Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, bike, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, run, swim in there in and around, do some brick workouts. And then maybe Mondays typically are active recovery day. So where do you fit in the strength training? Well, you can take that bike and run midweek and make it more of a strength workout. Stacy Sims talks about doing a gym workout and then how to do a treadmill or bike workout after that, that you kind of pre-fatigued your muscles by doing leg work specific to cyclists or specific to running. So anyways, today I did an outdoor workout with strength and plyometrics in intervals. So what does she say about endurance athletes about the zone two training everyone's talking about? So endurance athletes, yes, we read earlier the benefits of zone two, the long, slow distance, that's where you want to be for endurance. But for men they may benefit from doing more zone two. Peter Atia is obviously male. He's looking at the research that this will benefit your VO2 max, which is a sign of longevity. But is that research done on men and women or just men? And so we wanna look at what a male needs versus an aging female might be slightly different because we're not built exactly the same hormonally and genetically. So what am I saying? based on Stacey Sims article, zone two does, what does she say here? That to spend an amount of time in the low zone, heart rate zone, zone two training does not enhance mitochondria respiration or oxidative capacity like it does for a man. So men get the more of these benefits than we do to enhance mitochondrial respiration or your fat burning capacity. And so the quote I said in this podcast 
yesterday I recorded this. Physical activity is essential for males to maintain the mitochondria integrity in conjunction with more coupled respiration like females, even though their bioenergetic capacities may remain lower than females. So what they're saying, what this means, we always need to translate from these science talking people, translation, because females have a better mitochondria respiration and mitochondria density than men. Men need to do the long, slow aerobic zone two training to be more equal to a female. So men may be better at doing the 80, 20% training, 80% zone two, 20% intervals because they already have more sh short or uh, fast twitch muscle fibers over zone two slow twitch muscle fibers. What they're saying is by adding in the long, slow work with specific high intensity work, you'll be able to improve as a female athlete, your mitochondria capacity and a anaerobic capacity by the nature of high intensity work. This is for women, not just saying men and women, but for me, for the female as myself, if you're not endurance athlete, this helps clear up some of the confusion, hopefully around the zone too. But because everyone keeps talking about on these major podcasts that doing the zone two, you have to look at the male and female physiology, who is the research done. So women are not small men. That's what Stacey Sims is sharing. So I really appreciate that information. So you go to her blog, what women need to know about zone two training. Again, it's sciencey, but when we talk about zone two training, we're breaking down our training intensities into heart rate or power ranges. And we use that information to structure training plan, a workout that I'm talking about as we do with Pinoe over here. So we're looking at these five zones. Zone two, yes, is to build mitochondria function and fat burning efficiency. And then zone three, we're going to maybe look at more intervals, not so high for people that have cardiopulmonary limitations because this strengthens their pulmonary muscles, improve the cardiovascular system. So the zone three be helpful for those clients, but it does help speed and strength. Now that's also the black hole training zone that a lot of you are training too much. And you think you're doing your zone two training, but you're really in zone three. Now people also, if they think they're doing intervals, speed work, they're really doing zone three, because if you look at people in orange theory or F45 or training with friends, their intervals that they think they're doing. And I saw people doing this on the stairs today. They were talking the whole time. And I wanted to say that is not sprint interval training. So if you're trying to do sprint interval training, you get up to the top end of zone five. If you're doing HIT training, high intensity interval training, you're probably in zone four to bottom of zone five. So you're going to see that zone where it's more lactate and you have more not lactic acid as a buildup, but the conversation Daniel Crumback talks about is that it's the fuel system more leaving you more metabolic byproduct to be acidic is more the phosphorus from the CP fueling system, not necessarily lactate, lactic acid. So it's, you're buffering that acidic environment in your recovery down in zone one. And this zone four will help you improve the VO2 max and efficiency when working at sustainable pace as compared to zone three. Now zone five, you also are doing the sprint interval training at the top end of zone five, or, you know, your minute intervals. And as female athlete, Stacey Sims says, your interval shouldn't be more than a minute because that's too much stress when we are around that menopause age that we already have too much stress and our body has too much cortisol. So doing another source of stressful exercise, we want to keep the intervals shorter, 10 to 30 seconds or under a minute. So today I did 45 seconds. So zone five, isn't something you can hold very long. So the people that I saw today running stairs, they were more probably zone two or three, they were not pushing themselves and then they were recovering. But I wanted to say, Hey, you guys were talking the whole time going up the stairs. You don't need <laughs> you you're doing your stairs is great. But if you're, what's the purpose of your workout will change how you recover. So 
then we go back to Stacy Sims saying, here are your zones, but then what is zone two training? What is the zones? We just went over that. But zone two is that easy, long, slow, 60, 70% of your max for 45 minutes or longer. You feel like you can stay here for a long time. And this is a current recommendation to have most of your exercise sessions, three to four training sessions a week to be in zone two. But why are we told to be in zone two? This is a zone two is a low enough intensity to stimulate that mitochondria and other adaptations within the muscle cell to improve skeletal muscles ability to use fat as fuel, spare carbohydrates. So we learned about that, that we're burning more fat here. This is your fat burning zone. And this is how we identify zone two is where you're burning the peak amount of fat. And then you're also improving that metabolic switch signal, metabolic flexibility that you're able to switch to fat, to carbohydrate and the top end of your zone two, when we test it, we're identifying where this number is based on your results in the test. So when we decide where that zone for you, you're going to see the metabolic crossover point is how we're looking at how to put that in there. So the exercise test itself has all this information on my other blog, but how we use this to figure out your training program. Now, Stacy Sims is saying females, as we age, we don't need to do that majority of our workout in zone two as endurance athletes. And I've done this for years, but now I'm getting older. Remember, it's not that I, I'm getting slower because of my age. It's because my body hormones are changing and I need to adjust my schedule because my estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone is lower. So the thought of zone two is low enough intensity to stimulate mitochondria and other adaptations as I went over in the skeletal muscles ability to use fat as fuel. And we went over metabolic flexibility and able to clear up that lactate fuel during higher intensities as zone four and five. But what her point is, females physiology is different than a male's physiology. For female athletes, we have more type one fibers, a slow twitch than the fast twitch muscle fibers. So you can go into this blog and read over that. So we are already more efficient at burning fat because we already have greater mitochondria density or mitochondria and mitochondria are highly oxidative, which means they're more efficient at burning fat as fuel. So women at birth are more effective at endurance and fat efficient metabolic efficiency at burning fat as fuel. As we go higher intensities into that zone three, you start to shift your fuel source to zone four and shift again into zone five that our fuel source is changing, but our type A to type type two A to two B are recruited. So those have lower muscle, lower mitochondria density and higher capacity to use glucose for energy, which is why she talks about having your carbohydrates in and around your workout to fuel this more anaerobic workout, because we want to get stronger and faster and improve performance. We need to stop doing the females as much zone two men. You can keep doing your 80% zone two women. We need to do 80% of intervals, perhaps two to four times a week. So we want to get more as a female, the type two muscle fibers, men need to develop more type one muscle fibers. So how we train is going to improve that, improve that mitochondria density and respiratory rates, metabolic reactions that require oxygen to convert to fatty acids and APT, ATP, your fuel source to create that energy is going to be how you're training in zone two, because we're, we females are already good at that. We don't need to worry about that part. We need to worry about speed, power going all out. So going long and slow to boost your metabolic health, your endurance capacity, improve overall performance is the main goal of zone two improves the number and function of mitochondria and the skeletal muscle and increase fatty acid. But for women and men, no. So go back and read what she says again about zone two. We have XX chromosomes that are more type one oxidative fibers, greater fatigue resistant, greater autophagy activity and higher reliance on fat metabolism compared to men have XY chromosomes 
And so we need to flip flop. What we need is what they're already men are good at and what men need or what we're good at more endurance. So instead of your training partner, like I always train with my husband, he needs to do more, keep your heart rate down low. And I need to do the opposite. I need to warm up, warm down and do some high, low, high, low workout intervals. Okay. So hopefully that clears up some of the information, go back and read her article. Cause I'm not going over it word to word, but just, you get the gist of it. Metabolic flexibility. Women are already metabolic flex, metabolically flexible. Not only do women oxidize more fat and less carbohydrate during prolonged exercise, women have greater metabolic flexibility. We have a greater ability to switch that metabolic switching between fatty acid and glucose, depending on what we have available. So you can read the sciencey part, but her main point is if you're doing zone two, when you're doing zone two, make it zone two. And she says, what I say is that, you know, most people are not doing it right. So this is why going back to doing your metabolic testing, identifying what your true zones are and how much you need to spend. I know someone that's just doing sprint intervals and their zone two was very low but they don't want to do zone two training. They just want to do sprints. So if their VO two max is good, they're not training for endurance sports. Maybe we just need to make sure they're getting 10,000 steps in a day, having that movement, maybe going for one day a week, you're going for an hour walk or hour and a half hike or something, or a bike ride that you're down in the zone one, two. So yes, you get the benefits of a VO two max here, but when we identify your Pinoy metabolic test results, we can see how much time do we need to do in each zone, resistance training, how much you need to do, and you can do cardio training based on the zones. So going back to the Pinoy blog, your zone two, that can help improve your VT1 and your lower heart rates, so maximal over time. Zone two, zone three is more what we call tempo in my world. And that increases your speed at VT one and lowers your heart rate at submax activities, intensities, enhanced movement, economy, and buffering metabolites, but uh, also fat burning efficiency. So that's zone two, bottom zone three. Now, moderate cardio, more tempo, longer pieces, like a 20 minute piece, 40, 60 minutes. Maybe that's your 5k race, or you're training for a 10 K race, doing pieces, this will help improve your speed at ventilatory threshold two, and can enhance movement economy, fat burning efficiency and speed at VT one. Now, if you're doing heavy continuous cardio training zone four cardio training, 20 to 40 minutes, this can improve your speed at VT two and your VT max. So we want to look at improving different areas, but what do you need to do? What, you know, all this information, this depends on what your body, what have you been doing and what are your changes you need to make to get your goals you want. So we want to personalize your program. You don't need to do all these zones. We need to figure out where you're not doing enough of then how much interval training do you need to do? So short interval training, 10 seconds up to one minute, this is more that zone five, the short sprint interval training can improve VO2 max. So that's the main goal there, VO2 max. So if you're looking for longevity, as I was talking to Brad Kearns about, your VO2 max is improved from zone two in, in sprint interval training, but do you need to do zone two if you're improving your VO2 max here? So just not to overtrain. Medium interval training is at one to four minutes. And your workouts, when you, by the way, when you're doing sprint training or HIIT training, that means medium to long intervals, long would be four minutes to 10 minutes versus medium or one to four. And then sprint intervals are 10 seconds under a minute. Now that'd be zone three, zone four, and zone five. And having recovery in between. But what do you need to do is what we identify with your Pinoy metabolic test with someone that can assess it correctly, looking at your workout history, look at your nutrition and exercise log, matching your fueling with your training to improve performance. And then we figure out, okay, interval training. How do you do that? Where do you add in strength training? 
HIIT training can be within a workout. I do it on the bike and outside. You can do it inside the gym and combine your workouts there, adding in HIIT intervals in between your heavy weights or do it separate days, depending on your schedule and how much time you have. And some people just want that minimal effective dose, get it all in. So if you're struggling with weight loss, struggling with getting faster, getting stronger, gaining speed power, you may want to adjust your training and your nutrition, but also your lifestyle program. What I have said for over 10 years is that you need to train the right way and fuel. But if you're not managing stress, if you're not prioritizing your sleep hygiene routine, getting deep quality sleep and how you start the morning with morning sunshine, getting outside, getting fresh air movement, barefoot, ideally, you are not getting the most out of your workouts. So checking out, going back to your genetic reports, looking at how you need to train, looking at your sleep. We want to not get in the habit of just focusing on zone two and sprint training. And we want to focus on getting the protein goals, timing your nutrients as your carbohydrate intake of real food, avoiding all the crappy processed foods, refined oils. The main goal everyone's talking about is prioritizing protein and eating real food. Nutritional ketosis may be goal for some of you, maybe just, are you burning fat? You know, do you need to be in nutritional ketosis? So we want to look at all this information, personalize your program. And you can look at all these reports on the DNA company. I really find this interesting when I'm coaching clients to get these reports done as myself, look at what is your genetic report saying for fitness, rest, and recovery. As I went over in a previous video on my inflammation markers and cardiovascular health, they're not so great. So I need to really look at what I need to do. If I'm focused on not a race, I'm focused on life enhancing my aging process. So my background is endurance. I did Ironman 2001 to 2012, and then tried again, 2015, but just had severe adrenal exhaustion that I've never been able to get myself to do another long distance race. Now, genetically, all these reports I've done over the years, 80% weight lifting, I should do 20% cardiovascular, super fascinating for someone that's done marathons in long distance cycling since 1995, I've done endurance events since I was in my twenties. So my workout based on genetics is more strength gains to get the results, workout duration, rest and recovery, 78 hours of sleep, sauna to help recovery, which I've been doing. We have our sunlight and sauna. When is the best time to work out? You can look at this males versus females, really interesting information I've gone over before lifestyle recommendations, habits, behaviors to avoid, supplementation for building muscle, L-carnitine, which I took that this morning before my run, because I heard that's good to help if you are not eating protein enough, animal protein, if you're not digesting your protein as I don't have a good digestion system, but this helps burn fat, L-carnitine and building muscle, which is why I started eating more animal meat because I was finding I was low in all these markers. So L-carnitine, whey protein, and rest recovery, taking NAC, selenium, milk thistle, essential amino acids, CoQ10. Those are good for me, but really interesting to look at how to train based on your genetics, how to train based on your hormones, as Stacey Sims is talking about for females and how to train based on your current fitness level on a Pinoy metabolic test. Do you need interval training? Do you need some more sprint training? So you can find all that on Pinoy's website. I put everything into my blog, debbiepotts.net and get a test, but get your genetics done, get some blood chemistry panel done and get ideally Dutch and organic acids, metabolites or micronutrient tests. So really interesting amino acid profile, all these labs you can get. So hopefully that gives you some ideas on how you can improve your aging process. All right. Talk to you. Talk to you soon. Let me know your questions.